Hey everybody, good to see you and good to be able to talk to you on this um, wonderful September day as uh, we are uh, going to conclude the book of Acts today. I'm going to skip a chapter or two and go right to chapter 27 uh, in our book um, because i got a couple of announcements to kind of share with you. Now next week we won't have a Bible study, I'll be on vacation, but the following week, which would be Wednesday the 13th, I'm going to invite you in to... Uh, study um, from from church if you'd like to come. I think we're going to try to open sanctuary for just a minimal amount of people that could come out. Uh, we'll still have it sort of uh, uh, live stream so that you can watch it on that Wednesday evening. That's September 13th again. Uh, I think it's the 13th or not the 13th, but the 16th. I'm sorry, September 16th, which will be a Wednesday evening, uh, 7 o'clock. We'll meet, and if you're going to live stream, join us at 7. I will update us, and you'll be receiving a letter soon to let you know some of these updates as well. But we want to continue in the book of Acts just for a little bit, finish it up, and then maybe we'll move it to another one um, on September 16th. I'll have an announcement later on which book that will be. So let's begin with a word of prayer. God, we give you thanks for our day and for this time together. Bless us in our continued time of study, and especially as we maybe have an opportunity to meet together in person a little bit. Um, although it may be just a few of us, but we still can, um, can, can spend some time with one another in the word. So thank you very much for all you do for it's in Christ's name. We pray. Amen. So we've been studying in the book of Acts and this will be a short lesson today, uh, where Paul has been put on trial. He has claimed his Roman citizenship and now he's been moved into the process of, uh, where he wants to go appeal to Caesar. Uh, remember, we had Felix that he, he appealed to. Uh, then he went to Festus, who became the governor at the time. Um, and then there's some other areas where he's trying to meet with people, King Agrippa and a couple of others. And he kind of shares some of the same um, uh, testimony in the midst of it all. And um, But it's it's so that he doesn't have to go on trial in front of all of those uh, Jewish leaders in Jerusalem because he knows what's going to happen if he goes there, uh, that that will create... Um, a conflict for him, at least in his life, because that'll probably end his life. But here, at least within uh, Rome, he can have a, a sense of a fair trial and a trial that's not so based on the religious merits of it, but just uh, what is he really doing? Is he is he doing something that's against the government, which will kind of create a difficult a problem? But uh, that's not what he's doing. So chapter 27 is where I'm going to begin, uh, because um uh, Agrippa has said to Festus just before that he could have been set free if he hadn't appealed to Caesar. Um, that's what Agrippa says after hearing a lot of the testimony. He kind of feels like that there's, there's not much going on with Paul and uh, feels like that he's, I guess he kind of feels like he'd be on the railroad a little bit. So, you know, he's going to move it forward, though. So it says, chapter 27 says, when the time came, we set sail, and I'm assuming this is Luke will be part of this as too, for Italy. Paul and several other prisoners were placed in the custody of a Roman officer named Julius, a captain of the Imperial Regiment. Aristarchus, a Macedonian from Thessalonica, was also with me with us. And we left on a ship whose home port was Adramitanium on the northwest coast of the province of Asia. It was scheduled to make several stops at ports along the coast of the province. See, again, we're just in a lot of this geographical information at the end here at the book of Acts to, before we get to some of the less, the continued parts of Paul. Um, and that's what back, Acts has been about, isn't it? It's, it's, there's been, at the preview, pre, first part of it, there was a little more theology that came about as you would be Peter confronting the people there, and then you see Paul moving forward, but then you get in a lot of just the movement of the church as it's being developed and expanded, and then Paul's um, being uh, kind of tried here. You mostly see a lot of geographical movement, not as much of that theological uh, movement, because you hear some of the same testimony from Paul as he has to share it with uh, different people. So we know his story. Um, verse three, it says, the next day when we docked in Sidon, Julius was very kind to Paul and let him go ashore to visit with friends so that they could provide for his needs. Uh, not much like a prisoner, is it? You know, he's getting some free reign and Paul's not going to escape. He's not going to go anywhere. So he has no um, qualms about letting him kind of see friends there. Putting out to sea from there, we encountered strong headwinds that made it difficult to keep the ship on course. So we sailed north of Cyprus between the island and the mainland. Keeping the open sea, we passed along the coast of Cilicia and Pamphylia, landed at Myra. 
in the province of Lycia. There, the commanding officer found an Egyptian ship from Alexandria that was bound for Italy, and he put us on board that ship. We had several difficult days, uh, several days of slow sailing, and after some great difficulty, we finally neared um, Snidus. But the wind was against us, so we sailed across to Crete and along the sheltered coast of the island past the Cape of Salome. We struggled along the coast with several different with great difficulty, and finally arrived at Fair Havens, near the town of Lycia. We had a lo lost a lot of time, and the weather was becoming dangerous for sea travel because it was so late in the fall, and Paul spoke to the ship's officers about it. Men, he said, I believe there is trouble ahead if we go on, shipwreck, loss of cargo, and danger to our lives as well. But the officer in charge of the prisoners listened more to the ship's captain and the owner than to Paul. And since Fair Havens was an exposed harbor, a poor place to spend the winter, most of the crew wanted to go on to Phoenix, farther up the coast of Crete, and spend the winter there. Phoenix was a good harbor with only a southwest and northwest exposure. I guess that means it's a little warmer <laughs> in that particular region than it is in the one other one, you know. And if you want to, if you're going to spend the winter somewhere, you want it where it's warm, and maybe there's a little more work there too. When a light wind, uh, verse 13, when a light wind began blowing from the south, the sailors thought they could make it. So they pulled up anchor and sailed close to the shore of Crete. But the weather changed abruptly, and a wind of typhoon strength called a nor'easter burst across the island and blew us out to sea. The sailors, couldn't give, the sailors couldn't turn the ship into the wind, so they gave up and let us run into the gale. We sailed along the sheltered side of a small island named Calda where the great difficulty we ho hoisted aboard the lifeboat being towed behind us. Then the sailors bound ropes about ar around the hull of the ship to strengthen it. They were afraid of being driven across the sandbars of the Syrtis off the African coast, so they lowered the sea anchor to, drop the to slow the ship and were driven before the wind. The next day, as the gale force winds continued to batter the ship, the crew began throwing the cargo overboard. The following day, they even took some of the ship's gear and threw it overboard. The terrible storm raged. That uh, the terrible storm raged for many days, blotting out the sun and the stars until all hope was gone. No one had eaten for a long time. Finally, Paul called the crew together and said, "Men, you should have listened to me in the first place and not left Crete. You would have avoided all this damage and loss. But take courage. None of you will lose your life." even though the ship will go down. For last night, an angel of God, listen to this, to whom I belong and whom I serve beside me, he said, don't be afraid, Paul, for you will surely stand trial before Caesar. What's more, God in his goodness has granted safety to everyone sailing with you. So take courage, for I believe God. It will be just as he said, but we will be shipwrecked on an island. So so God has promised Paul that he's going to go to, he's going to make it to, to, to visit Caesar, to be put on trial in front of Caesar. And not only him, but everybody that's on that boat, everyone's going to be saved. And it came from the word of God. And if God speaks, God speaks. And so Paul believed this to be true, and we should too. Verse 27 in chapter 27 says, About midnight on the 14th night of the storm, as we were being driven across the Sea of Adria, the sailors sensed land was near. They dropped a weighted line and found that the water was 120 feet deep. But a little later, they measured again and found it was only 90 feet deep. At this rate, they were afraid that we would soon be driven against the rocks along the shore. So they threw out four anchors from the back of the ship and prayed for daylight. Then the sailors tried to abandon the ship. They lowered the lifeboat as though they were going to put out anchors from the front of the ship. But Paul said to the commanding officer and the, and the soldiers, you will all die unless the sailors stay aboard. So the soldiers cut the ropes of the lifeboat and let it drift away. Just as day was dawning, Paul urged everyone to eat. You have been so worried that you haven't touched food for two weeks, he said. Please eat something now for your own good, for not a hair on your heads will perish. You see, there's still this promise to them that Paul has given that God is going to save them. Uh, just... Don't worry. Don't have this fear about you. Um, then he took some bread, gave thanks to God before them all, and broke off a piece and ate it. Then everyone was encouraged and began to eat. All 276 of us who were on board. That's a pretty big ship, isn't it? 276 people, plus it had cargo at one time. 
After eating, the crew lightened the ship further by throwing the cargo of wheat overboard. <coughs> when morning dawned, they didn't recognize the coastline, but they saw a bay with a beach and wondered if they could get to shore by running the ship aground. So they cut off the anchors and let, left them in the sea. Then they lowered the rudders, raised the foresail, and headed toward shore. But they hit a shoal and ran the ship aground too soon. The bow of the, the, bow of the ship stuck fast while the stern was repeatedly smashed by the force of the waves and began to break apart. The soldiers wanted to kill the prisoners and make sure they didn't swim ashore and escape, but the commanding officer wanted to spare Paul, so he didn't let them carry out their plan. And then he ordered all who could swim to jump overboard first and make for land. The others held on to planks and debris uh, from the broken ship. So everyone escaped safely to shore, just as Paul had promised that God had promised, that everyone make it to the shore. So everything is okay in this moment. They just had to not fear. But they are shipwrecked. And it tells us here that they're where they are. Uh, chapter 28 says, Once we were safe on shore, we learned that we were on the uh, island of Malta. The people of the island were very kind to us. It was cold and rainy, so they built a fire on the shore to welcome us. As Paul gathered an armful of sticks and was laying them on the fire, a poisonous snake, driven by the heat, bit him on the hand. The people of the island saw it hanging from his hand and said to each other, A murderer, no doubt. I guess they had this idea, these premonitions about what happens to people because of things that happen to them. And so they felt like Paul, because he got bit by this poisonous snake, was now a murderer. Let's see what happens. Though he escaped the sea, justice would not permit him to live. But Paul shook off the snake into the fire and was unharmed. The people waited for him to swell up or suddenly drop dead. But when they had waited a long time and saw that he wasn't harmed, they changed their minds and decided that he was a god. <laughs> Near the shore where we landed was an estate belonging to Publius, the chief official of the island. He welcomed us and treated us kindly for three days. As it happened, Publius' father was ill with fever and dysentery. Paul went in and prayed for him, and laying his hands on him, he healed him. Paul is, is still doing his work in the midst of all that's going on. Then all the other sick people of the island came and were healed. As a result, we were showered with honors, and they came. We, and when the time came to sail, people supplied us with everything we would need for the trip. Uh, so now they're going to go back onto a boat uh, to go on the Rome. It was three months after the shipwreck that we set sail for another ship that had wintered on the island, an Alexandrian ship with twin, twin gods as its figurehead. Our first shot stop was Syracuse, where we stayed three days. From there, we sailed across to Regium. A day later, we sailed south. We, a day later, a south wind began blowing. To, to the following day, we sailed up the coast of Putolia. There, we found some believers who invited us to spend the week with them, and so we came to Rome. Verse 15 says, The brothers and sisters of Rome had heard that we were coming, and they came to meet us at the Forum on the Appian Way. Others joined us at the three taverns. When Paul saw them, he was encouraged and thanked God. When he arrived in Rome, Paul was permitted to have his own lodging, though he was guarded by a soldier. So he's not really in a jailhouse or a prison. He has his own house, although he's under guard. So he's somewhat under house arrest in now in Rome. Because remember, he's waiting to have audience with Caesar to share, spend, to, to tell his case. Verse 17, three days after Paul's arrival, he called together the local Jewish leaders, and he said to them, Brothers, I was arrested in Jerusalem and handed over to the Roman government. Even though I had done nothing against our people or to the custom of our ancestors, the Romans tried me and wanted to release me because they found no cause for the death sentence. But when the Jewish leaders protested the decision, I felt it necessarily, necessary to appeal to Caesar, even though I had no desire to press charges against my own people. I asked you to come here today so that we could get acquainted, and so I could explain to you that I am bound to, but with this chain because I believe that the hope of Israel, the Messiah, has already come, that meaning Jesus. They replied, We have no letters from Judea or reports against you from anyone who has come here. But we want to hear what you believe, for the only thing we know about this movement is that it is, in, is denounced everywhere. So a time was set, and on that day a large number of people came to Paul's lodging. He explained and testified about the kingdom of God and tried to persuade them about Jesus from scriptures. Using the law of Moses and the books of the prophets, he spoke to them from morning till evening. Some were persuaded by the things he said, but others did not believe. 
And after they had argued back and forth among themselves, they left with this final word from Paul. And this is our final word. The Holy Spirit was right when he said to your ancestors through Isaiah the prophet, Go and say to these people, this people, When you hear what I say, you will not understand. When you see what I do, you will not comprehend. For the hearts of those people are hardened, and their ears cannot hear, and they have closed their eyes, so that their eyes cannot see, and their ears cannot hear, and their hearts cannot understand, and they cannot turn to me and let me heal them. So I want you to know that this salvation from God has, been, has also been offered to the Gentiles, and they will accept it. And then our conclusion of Acts says this, For the next two years Paul lived in Rome at his own expense. He welcomed all who visited him, uh, boldly proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ, and no one tried to stop him. And that's the book of Acts. Now, we have letters that come afterwards, and a lot of these letters were written while he was in, under house arrest at this time, as churches that he had started or was associated with at some point uh, begin to ask questions or have, have comments or have some sort of disagreements, and Paul has to confront those or answer those letters. And so we might work into some of those a little bit later. But uh, for the most part, that's the book of Acts. And so I'm glad you were able to spend some time and study with me on this. And again, like I said, join me on September 16th, where we'll come back again with something else. Um, for some of you, if you want to come to the church, we'll do that. We'll sit in the sanctuary and we'll be spread apart. Um, and uh, But we'll also continue it uh, live streaming on Facebook Live and, so, uh, and then record it over to YouTube. So thanks for joining me again and have a very blessed day.